Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Uh, for most of you uh, who didn't come yet to the holy city of Karbala, it's the area of Bayn al Haramain, the area between the holy shrines of Imam Hussein and his brother Abu Fadl Abbas, peace be upon him. Brothers, I want to talk to you about, uh, you know, about our Imam, Sahib al Zaman, Imam al Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance. How he came to the uh, position of Imama. And uh, how do we, what is the culture of waiting? How do we wait for our Imam, for the Master of our time, for Sahib al-Zaman? Respected uh, brothers and sisters, uh, the Imam came to the, uh, to the position of Imama at the age of, uh, you know, he was a child. But basically, he was not the first Imam who come uh, to this position at that age. Basically, we have Imam uh, Muhammad Jawad, peace be upon him and uh, Imam Ali al-Hadi, peace be upon him, uh, they both came to the position of Imama at young ages. The reason, you know, you will ask, you, will, you, will, you probably have a have, have question that how can people recognize uh, a young child as an Imam? Good question. Uh, the thing is that the Imams are basically, you know, divinely inspired. So, they don't get to learn things. They basically know everything because they, they are divinely inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when a young child, uh, you know, portrays uh, a lot of signs uh, in matters of religion, in matters of politics, in matters of, uh, you know, sciences, people come to believe that it's a miracle, basically. It's a miracle that a young child can, can know all these things. And this is what happened with our Imam. This is what happened with uh, Imam al-Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance. This is what happened with Sahib al-Zaman. The other part is uh, the culture of waiting for our Imam. The culture of waiting for Sahib al-Zaman. You know, the Imam is, uh, is absent for about a thousand years. But people, Shias basically, believe that one day, the Imam will come out to fill earth with justice and fairness. The Imam uh, will, will, will eventually come to this world and fill it with justice, as it is now full with, with injustice. You, you know that a lot of oppressors uh, rule all over the world and oppress the, 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 the weak people. And you know, since we're in the holy city of Karbala and since it is the uh, city of Imam Hussein, the Imam will come out for justice, will come out for revenge for his grandfather, for, for the father of the Imams, for Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. And since we are talking about the culture of waiting, I want to go for something and then it will be all linked together. Uh, I will ask you a question, why, uh, why did Imam Hussein sacrifice himself? He sacrificed not only himself, he sacrificed himself, he sacrificed his family, you know, uh, his companions. He sacrificed them all for one thing, for standing up against, you know, oppressors, against the rulers of, of Ben Umay, against Yazid, who represented all the bad things, you know, come out to be in one person, to be, you know, at one side, which is the side of Yazid. And all the good things came to be represented in the side of Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, stood for good. Imam Hussein stood for justice. Imam Hussein stood against tyranny, against tyrants. Imam Hussein stood for, for truthfulness, for courage, for all the beloved characteristics of Islam. Basically, Imam Hussein stood for Islam in order to, you know, in order that people would say that. You know, uh, Islam is a religion of beauty. Islam is a religion of justice. That's why Imam Hussein, uh, you know, sacrificed himself, his family, and his companions. And this is what Imam Al Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance, will come out with. He will also stand for for justice and stand against uh, tyranny, against tyrants, against oppression, against the bad things that Islam told us to stay away of and this is how we should wait our Imam basically this is 
the culture of waiting. How do we wait the Imam? We shouldn't wait him knowing that the Imam, peace be upon him, you know, that the Imam uh, is, you know, is, is aware of all of our actions. The Imam knows all what we do because basically he is divinely inspired. So he knows about his Shias. He knows about what the Shias do. So basically, do you want to make the Imam feel happy in his, you know, in his absentia during his absence? During his absence, we should we should be awaiting for him. But how uh, we await for him? We should await for him uh, at the same line that he is going to come out with. The same line that all the imams sacrifice themselves, sacrifice themselves for. The imams sacrifice themselves for justice, for rightfulness. You know, uh, for people. Uh, to be righteous for the religion of Islam, the beauty of the religion of Islam. And that's, my brothers, what I wanted to tell you about. I want to tell you that uh, we should, we should, you know, send the Imam good news that we are awaiting him with, uh, with compassion to, to one another, with uh, love in our hearts to other people. You know, our first Imam, Imam Ali, peace be upon him, our very our first Imam came out to say that people of two kinds, either your brother of faith or equal in humanity. And this is what the Imams actually stood for. The Imams stood for equality. They sacrificed themselves for equality, for justice, for righteousness, for fairness, for truthfulness. And this is how we should wait our Imam. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, at this piece of paradise, at the area between the holy shrines of the Imams, peace be upon them. Thank you very much.